So odds are you've probably heard about Gen 3 OU being a fantastic metagame, and I have a lot as well. But if you're like me, you probably keep wondering why. Why do I keep hearing about this gen so much in particular? Why not any other gen? Well today, we're going to answer that question. We're going to be answering WDPLGTOU. Why do people love Gen 3 OU? So if you straight up just want my answer, then you can skip to here. But the first part of my video will be focused on me describing what makes the game different mechanically, giving a very short summary of what the meta was like, and me actually playing Gen 3 OU. So if you want to watch a Gen 9 player and a mid-2000s born child discover this fossil of a metagame and bubble through it kind of like an idiot, then you can stay tuned. First off, probably, the biggest difference is the way that physical special split worked. By that I mean, what dictates whether a move is physical or special is its typing. So for example, all fire type moves are special. So both fire blast and fire punch are special. All water type moves are also special, and all ground type moves are physical, etc. So that's obviously kind of weird, and it kind of leads to a lot of mixed attackers that we don't have nowadays, because it's just not practical. Other than that, Sand is infinite, not limited to just 5 turns, recovery has 32 power points, choice craft does not exist, life orb does not exist, stealth rock does not exist, arena trap is not banned, and of course heavy duty boots does not exist. I know there are lots of other differences that I didn't note, so feel free to mention them, but these are the ones that are the most impactful slash important in my opinion, or the ones that felt important to me. And lastly, in Gen 3, the Pokemon that were the most dominant were Tyranitar, Skarmory, Blissey, Swampert, and Gengar. They have great synergy with one another, but no Pokemon is overpowered, with Tyranitar being arguably the best Pokemon in the whole tier, and Skarmory being a very close second. Which just so you know, when I started playing, I wasn't actually aware of many of this mechanics that I just listed, so I was going into it with very little info. Also, this is going to be my dramatic reenactment because I didn't actually videotape it for the first time, so without further ado, here it is. Alright, I guess I could choose Skarmory. He's always been a good Pokemon. I guess I can just give him what I give Corviknight. Uh, Roost would be good. It doesn't it doesn't get Roost. Oh, that's interesting. Well that sucks. He doesn't have reliable recovery. Maybe he maybe he can use body No, he doesn't have body press either. That that's that's great. Okay. Um well he definitely has iron defense. Okay, literally what does he do? Okay, now I have my team. Oh, there's no there's no team preview. I've literally no knowledge on this team. Well, I won my first battle thanks to Hidden Power Flying Salamance, which is kind of strange. We could try a different team and battle again. Oh, a Snorlax. That's that's fun. I didn't expect. Oh. Okay, well, next Pokémon. What about what about Oh. That's that's great. Okay. That's enough for now. Fun fact in Gen 3, Explosion is a move that cuts off the opponent's defense in half, so that, you know, kind of makes it hard to survive. If I'm going to be completely honest, I'm not very good at this tier. My favorite tier to play is Uber's National Dex, which is completely different, but I honestly really enjoyed it because it was completely different, which I think just goes to show that it is legitimately fun. So here is why from my perspective, people like Gen 3 OU so much. First off, it's a very balanced game. What I mean by that is, you know, not to get too political, but I'm going to have to say that when you take a look at Gen 9 OU and compare it to Gen 3 OU, Gen 9 OU is a little bit more unbalanced, if I may. From Weather Wars to Golden Go plus Gliscor combo, the kind of controversial bands in Terra, of course, it's all a pretty offensively oriented game and not super balanced in my humble opinion. I was watching Pink Heracross earlier, and he explains it better than I could, so I'm going to insert the clip here. However, you should go ahead and watch the video, since I don't want to mischaracterize anything he says. Generally, a team building metagame is a lot more restrictive and difficult to build in when the top tier threats are difficult to manage. And we have never had top tier threats like those in Gen 9. I mean, Roaring Moon with Dragon Dance, knockoff acrobatics, and the pressure your team has to deal with this in the builder when you're trying to consider all of these threats uh, is immense. Which means you need to have a lot of Pokemon on your team that check a lot of boxes. You need to have something, you can't just have a Pokemon that is your breaker. It needs to be your breaker and maybe it has priority as well. Or it's your breaker and, it, and it's also your speed controller. It's at Stealth Rock. Because trying to fit things onto your team that you need, like removal, like hazards, uh, like offensive pressure, and still answer these monsters in the tier is an extremely difficult task. And what that means is every single slot on your team needs to be doing a lot of different things. And that's not what lower tier Pokemon do. So this means, this is why you've seen a lot of teams with six OU Pokemon almost all the time. Because when you have these lower tier Pokemon, 
they don't fulfill a lot of slots. They have a niche, usually. They, they're very, very good in specific situations, and they do something unique. Uh, but you can't afford to run that anymore. You need to have everything on your team be working double shifts so you don't get ruined by a roaring moon and a gouging fire. So those Pokémon where you used to be rewarded for your creativity, for thinking outside the box and picking something anti-meta, doesn't work anymore because you can't pick something anti-meta. You need something that can fulfill a ton of different roles. And if you try to run something a little different that can fulfill a role or do something you think is good, it might be effective, but then you probably end up finding yourself getting swept by something or your team will have other issues. And that part where he talks about almost always needing 6 OU Pokémon, is vital, because that's not something that's true for Gen 3 OU. In any meta, Pokemon that are dominant and very popular. Here, it would be Tyranitar, Swampert, Blissey, Gengar, etc., what I said. But you can still get very creative, not just regarding those builds for those Pokemon, but the team in general. What I'm saying is that it is much less centralized. And in a game like competitive singles, where part of the fun is literally building your team, being able to have that creativity available to you is a lot of fun. And you might be saying, no one is forcing you to use Great Tusk, King Gambits, etc. in Gen 9 OU. Yes, you are correct. Thank you, technically no one is forcing you. But the fact is, in Gen 3 OU, you do have much more freedom when it comes to strategies and team building, while still having a chance to win. So if you play correctly, creativity is much more rewarded here, compared to the current Gen 9 metagame, because you actually have a higher chance of winning while getting more creative with your team. From my point of view, things are just a lot more tame. Gen 9 OU has, in my opinion, been the gen that really made evident how much the power creep has gotten to us. And I hear you saying, yeah, as more gens come along, other Pokemon will get outclassed and countered. We all know that. That's normal. I agree. But when we look at the OU tier today, I can say that there, to my knowledge, there hasn't been a gen where power creep has been as big of a talking point as it is in this one. Also, I know that I've been complaining about Gen 9 OU, but to be fair, in my opinion, part of the reason Gen 3 is so much fun is because it's kind of a fresh air from the current metagame. And you might be thinking about nostalgia. That's probably a big reason why people like it, right? Not because it's legitimately good. And yeah, I see your point, but I haven't seen any other old gen have this much love towards it. So obviously, while I don't doubt that maybe some people do play it because it reminds them of the old days, I do not think that that's the main reason. I mean, some old metagames are actually rather hated. Exhibit A. My scathing hatred for Gen 5 OU is no secret. I think Gen 5 OU is the worst OU metagame by far. I, I think it's embarrassing that we have it in tournaments uh, in the state that it's in, and has been for a while. It's part of what makes it such an embarrassment. I uh, have great wrath towards some of the most diehard uh, Gen 5 OU truthers, uh, they saw the light, and they were, and while playing it in SPL and preparing for it and all that, then they suddenly were like, wait a second, this tier sucks! Yeah, even if you have a lot of nostalgia, the truth is, people are not going to spend time laddering and playing hours of an old metagame just for the nostalgia if the meta isn't good or enjoyable. Now, do I think it's perfect? No, I, I do think it has flaws. There are some things that I don't understand why they are legal and don't really enjoy. Primarily, Bad and Pass, fun fact, is legal. And I really hate the prominence and presence of Pokemon who use Explosion and I find that really annoying. I also dislike that there is no team preview, but honestly, even besides all of that, I do think it's a lot more fun than playing current Gen 9, which I do understand is subjective. And it's a cycle, because of this, people are constantly playing and coming up with new strategies, so it never gets boring or stale or redundant. If you play Gen 3 OU now, it won't take you very long to find a match. And in my opinion, we owe part of that to the fact that there are a lot of YouTubers who have a lot of passion for these old games, and are eager to teach people how to play so it's not even close to a dying meta. In my opinion, and I am aware that this comparison isn't very good, but it's the only one that I could come up with in my head. If you think about it, games like soccer and basketball are kind of redundant themselves. We all know how many players are going to be on the field, we know the point of the games, we know the rules, as well as what makes a good team. But people keep on playing and coming up with new strategies. I think. I don't really play sports, I just play Pokemon. So, these aren't dying games either. So at the end of the day, in my opinion, the reason Gen 3 OU is so beloved is because this game had a mix of mechanics that were the last of its time. It was still balanced, although it had those mechanics, with neither the metagame being too defensive or offensive in rewarding creativity, as well as offering solid Pokemon to base your team off, especially for beginners. This results in a very friendly metagame that is, brace yourself, fun. It also benefits, in my opinion, from being a gen without a gimmick. 
and by that I mean is that while gimmicks in general are meant to make Pokemon games more interesting and fun, with the exception of Megas, which were more or less loved by most people, the other gimmicks like Z-Moves, Terra, and obviously Gigantamax were kind of controversial, some more than others. But Gen 3 doesn't have a gimmick, so in that sense, it's kind of free of controversy. I mean, there were times where I was playing a match where I thought, oh, is he gonna Terra? And then I realized, no, you idiot, he can't Terra, you're playing Gen 3, thank god. Anyways, I know that there's a lot more to say, so feel free to say it, especially if you're an avid Gen 3 player, and feel free to disagree as well. I know that I may have stated things that people have disagreed with, especially regarding Gen 9. So, thank you, and thank you for coming to my half-baked TED Talk.